Hi, let's talk about the overview of intermolecular forces. So just general ideas, what, what are intermolecular forces? Um, notice that I use the acronym IMF, and you'll see that in a lot of my videos. Intermolecular forces, just to save time, uh, we call that IMF. So what are intermolecular forces? Uh, here's your definition. It's electrostatic forces of attraction. So really, this is Coulombic attraction. Uh, funny thing, if in chemistry you're ever like, oh, what's the answer? <laughs> your safe bet is either saying the mole or Coulombic attraction. It's like in Sunday school. If you don't know the answer, you say Jesus or the Bible, right? Here we have a Coulombic attraction. Um, so it's that positive, negative, two different charges attracting. Um, so it's the forces of attraction of electrons to the nucleus of another atom. So it's the electron from this atom A attracted to the nucleus of atom B. That's what's going to attract and pull these together. Um, now notice there is a potential energy in the interaction between atom A and atom B. As these get closer, you increase the potential energy. Again, Coulomb's law, the closer the charges, the greater the potential energy because it's Q1 times Q2 divided by D squared. Let's write that down. Q1 times Q2 divided by D squared. The closer those molecules are together, right here, the smaller the distance, the larger the quotient, which is your potential energy. VE would be your potential energy right there. Um, so it's going back to physics. It's going back to Coulomb's law and that potential energy. Atoms attracted one to another because the electrons of one are attracted to the protons of another atom. Okay, um, notice that um, IMF is really just phases. It's the phases of molecules. Um, so it's attraction between molecules creating either liquids or solids. You'll recall that gases have no intermolecular forces. Um, from our kinetic molecular theory, gases have no attraction or repulsion. They move in these crazy random straight lines um, so fast, so far apart, they don't attract and they don't repel. Um, that's one of the significant things about gases. Now to contrast that, liquids, they have this attraction one to another but it's not as strong as the intermolecular forces attraction of solids because uh, liquids, they attract, but they can still translate and move around one another, whereas solids have greater intermolecular forces because they're fixed. It's a fixed solid where those molecules don't move. Um, so solids have greater intermolecular forces than, I could put an inequality here, they have greater intermolecular forces than liquids. Gases have zero intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces, it, um, they really allow for molecules to have phases, to be in the liquid phase, attract together, and a solid phase fixed, really attracting to one another. Um, now, where do we see intermolecular forces? This is going to be in molecules, so it's covalent um, compounds. It's when you have nonmetal and nonmetal, and they can be in small molecules like water or ammonia. They could be a large molecules, um, and this could be great big, um, like hydrocarbons, um, oils. We could have larger molecules, and they can also be in different regions of large molecules. Really good example of this is proteins. Uh, that different proteins they'll have nonpolar regions and polar regions, and that creates the attraction and the repulsion. Think about the um, lipid bilayer of our cells. You have a polar side and a nonpolar side, and that's. The nonpolar sides are going to um, attract together in the middle, and then the polar ends um, are on the outside of that cell, um, that not cell wall, it's um, the membrane. Um, so really good example that large regions in um, molecules like proteins, um, they can have uh, polar, nonpolar areas that create different intermolecular forces. Um, so technically, intermolecular forces are categorized as a charge distribution. So it's the whole idea of positive and negative, that you're going to have um, polar molecules, a partial positive, attracted to a partial um, negative. Now, even in nonpolar molecules, remember, there's going to be a charge distribution. Okay, let's talk about that. So nonpolar molecules, the electrons share perfectly. There's no partial positive or partial negative, but we create, induce, um, a charge distribution with London dispersion forces. It's randomly um, electrons going to one side of that molecule for a moment, 
creates that partial negative, so it induces a partial positive in another molecule, they attract. Uh, so its charge distribution, whether it's polar or nonpolar, it will be somehow partial positive, partial negative. It's just in the nonpolar molecule, it's temporary. A polar molecule, that charge distribution is permanent. Um, next, so intermolecular forces are related to the size and structure of the molecule. Let's take water as an example. If I'm looking at the structure, it's those two lone pairs that creates this partial negative, and there's your partial positive, a permanent dipole, um, because the electrons create that partial negative, um, and then this is a special dipole-dipole because it's hydrogen bonding, um, where the charge distribution is very, very distinct and different. You have a high negative, and then a very distinct positive. Um, and those hydrogen bonds um, are really, really strong for intermolecular forces. Remember the word bond is really not the correct word, it's a force. It's not an actual bond, it's a force. Now, um, in addition to that, it's going to be the size. Um, so this really, really comes into play with London dispersion forces. Let me give you an example with our halogens. Um, so we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, okay? And these are diatomic elements. Um, so they always have a buddy for stability, so they have an octet, they bond to themselves. Really, really interesting. They all bond to themselves, so they have a zero dipole moment. They 100% share perfect, extremely nonpolar, okay? Quintessential nonpolar. Yet, fluorine, the phase is a gas. Chlorine, the phase is a gas, and this is all at 25 degrees C. Watch this, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. Now, how is it that these don't have intermolecular forces? The bromine has intermolecular forces, definitely as a liquid, and iodine has even stronger intermolecular forces because it's a solid in a fixed position. It all lies with the size. You'll recall that London dispersion forces increase as you increase surface area, as you get bigger molecules. So this is a beautiful example of size. You go from the small fluorine down to that large iodine, you have a great increase in London dispersion forces, so it increases the um, intermolecular forces. So again, intermolecular forces depend on the structure um, of the molecule as well as the size of the molecule. Next, phase changes. Uh, so this is going to be physical changes. Physical changes are all attributed to intermolecular forces. So going from, say, a liquid to a solid um, is going to be the liquid has less intermolecular forces, the solid has more intermolecular forces. If we go all the way to a gas, it means we put in enough energy to 100% remove all the intermolecular forces. And that's why um, heat of vaporization is so high in comparison to heat of fusion, because heat of fusion, you're just overcoming intermolecular forces from a fixed position to translation, a liquid. But then to go from, I have these intermolecular forces, 100% breaking them to evaporate, wow, that takes a ton of energy to break all those intermolecular forces. So phase changes, it's all IMF, it's all intermolecular forces. Now to contrast that, Chemical changes are the breaking and forming of intra, I-N-T-R-A. You'll recall intramolecular forces are the forces that hold atoms together in a compound. So with that, we're talking about covalent network, ionic bonding, metallic bonding, and covalent bonding. Um, so that's a different category. We're actually breaking bonds um, for reactants and then forming new bonds in products. So again, phase changes are intermolecular forces, this um, Coulombic attraction, and chemical changes are the intramolecular forces that's actually breaking atoms um, within a molecule. So um, we're taking a molecule and we're breaking um, the bond that holds those atoms together. Now, little side note, um, there's a gray area on this, and it's dissolution. Um, so this would be dissolving salts. It's actually both, um, of is both intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. Let me show you an example of this. We're going to use our very usual example of salt water. So I'm going to take sodium chloride 
Okay, just table salt. I'm gonna drop that in some warm water. So we stir it up and the sodium chloride, that ionic compound, which is an intramolecular force, it breaks apart. It dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus. Now the water where the intermolecular force comes in, the water surrounds the sodium. So this would be oxygens. I'll just draw this really quick. Are going to go close because the oxygen is the partial negative and the oxygen is attracted to that sodium. Now the chlorine, the water is going to have the hydrogen go close to it because the hydrogen is the partial positive and that positive is attracted to the negative. That right there is an ion dipole intermolecular force. So we have two things happening. We have an intramolecular force, the ionic compound dissociates and breaks into a sodium ion chloride ion. And then the water surrounds it in an ion dipole intermolecular force uh, where the opposite charges are attracted one to another. And that's the dissolution process. It's actually the interaction between both the intra and intermolecular force here the sodium chlorate um, is more stable um, being surrounded by the water than being in that ionic compound. Kind of interesting, kind of interesting. And sodium chlorate has such a strong electrostatic force as an ionic bond. Just to melt that, you have to heat it to over 900 degrees. And yet, drop it in water, breaks apart. But it's because of that ion dipole intermolecular force creates great stability. Kind of interesting. So, wonderful overview. Now you know intermolecular forces. Now I pulled out a lot of things talking about London dispersion forces, hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, ion dipole. If you have any questions on that, I have videos. So look at Lean Think and you can watch more videos. Thank you. Have a good day.